What is happening, everyone? Welcome to Mailbag Monday number 18. Thank you for tuning in to K8MRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. Guys, if you have a question for me that you would like to see featured on Mailbag Monday, shoot me an email. K8MRD at iCloud.com in the subject. Put Mailbag Monday, and that way it will highlight in my list of many, many emails your email, and I will single you out and we will feature you on Mailbag Monday. So I've ah, been on a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, the last month has been absolutely crazy with uh, going out of town for some work, hamcation, YouTubers ham fest. I just got back from Denver yesterday. I was there all week. Uh, so it's been, gosh, it's been probably a month since we've had a, a Mailbag Monday. So keep the questions coming in. Uh, to be honest with you, we may have answered everything. The questions have slowed down a bit. So uh, I don't know if we'll continue to keep this a, 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 a weekly thing, but uh, I am committed to this. I, I think this is a, a great thing to have this question and answer type forum. So uh, whenever I get enough to actually make a video, we'll keep them coming. So, uh, but don't be afraid. Don't hesitate to ask me questions. So uh, yeah, been, uh, been, been busy, but we're going to get back at it. So let's get into it right now. Our first question uh, has to do with inline chokes. This viewer writes, I am a newly licensed operator. First off, welcome to the hobby. With a very basic question relating to your October 16th, 2020 video, Pac-10 NFET Halfway Portable Ham Radio Antenna Review. <laughs> Did I really name it that? <laughs> you mentioned adding a choke in line, which the Pac-10 owner's manual also recommends. Can you provide some examples or recommendations as to what I should be looking to purchase and where? So that's a great question. And I have a couple examples uh, right here that I'll show you. The most important thing you want to look for is a Mix 43 ferrite. And they come in all kinds of different ways. So something like this is an inline choke. This comes from uh, ABR Industries. They make coaxial cable and you can find these. I'll show you some websites where you can find these, but this is just an inline uh, ferrite. There's, there's a bunch of ferrite beads in here and you can plug this in. You will need an adapter if you're gonna put this like in the middle of your coax, say, you know, halfway between your antenna and your radio, you'll need an adapter, uh, just an SO239, like a barrel uh, connector type thing. Uh, so, so that's one way. The other way, you can get some of these snap-on ferrite beads, okay? And you can do a couple things. You can, you can just clamp them on your coax and add a bunch of them okay like such and just add as many as you want or you can you can kind of cheat and get multiple turns out of one because you don't just have to do one you, you could even so here's here's one with a bigger hole and depending on the coax or what you want to do so let's say we get one with a bigger hole okay we can wrap our coax in here multiple times so now i've got three turns in this coax okay so that's the same as putting three ferrite beads on here and if you get multiples of these if you put another one on here you would then do put three turns in here well now you have essentially six ferrite beads on here so let's hop over on the internet machine i'll show you some websites and stuff and uh we can take a look at where to find these and kind of what's out there now, obviously, the first place you should look is the Pac-10 website. Here is their uh, Pac-10 Mini inline RF choke. Uh, unfortunately, it's sold out, but uh, when these are available, this would be a great option. It's got two BNCs, and you just plug it right in line with your Pac-10. Another place you can go to Gigaparts, and like here's uh, an RF choke similar to what we just looked at. This one's from Chameleon. Uh, same idea. I, in fact, Chameleon gets their stuff from ABR Industries, so I would suspect that this is the exact same choke that I have from ABR Industries. You can also get, here's some ferrite beads from MFJ. These are actually what I'm using, so you can buy them as a kit. You can also go to Ham Radio Outlet. They've got a bit more options. I mean, you can get like these big honking things here that go in line. Uh, like like this from Radio Waves. That's a high power version for 95 bucks. Uh, here's the Chameleon Choke that goes for about 57 bucks. 
Uh, but what I also wanted to show you, like this from Palomar Engineers, this is just a, a ferrite core, okay? And now you can buy this already made, or you could just search, we're, we're looking for Mix 31. So you could just search Google for 240-31. So 240 is the size and dash 31 is the mix. And I would get a 240 size so you can actually make one of these yourself. And you see how the coax is just wrapped in here as many times as you can. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Uh, at least 10, maybe 11 turns in there. So that's basically the same as having 11 of these on your uh, coaxial cable. So just having one of those in line would be great. Now you just, you'd have to make a coax or, or get a coax that would have uh, preferably two SO239 uh, sockets on it. So you could kind of have that in line with your uh, antenna. So it's kind of in the middle. You, you typically with an NFED want to choke it in the middle um, but not necessarily. Sometimes you can choke it at the radio. Sometimes you choke it at the feed point. So there's there's lots of different uh, ways to choke and, and places to choke. Uh, you kind of have to experiment with that. But that is where I would direct you on choking your antenna. Sometimes you don't even need one. It really just depends. So uh, if you find you're, you're maybe not getting full output power, that's a good indication that you might have some common mode current coming back to the radio. And if that's the case, uh, try putting a choke on it. Like I said, sometimes you put it at the radio. Sometimes you put it kind of halfway between the radio and the feed point of the antenna. Sometimes, like with the Chameleon uh, Lightweight NFED Sloper, they actually recommend choking it right at the antenna feed point. So... Uh, it, it really just depends, and you can experiment and, and see what results you get. But there are some choking information for you. So how's that? So great question. Uh, one that uh, we haven't talked about yet on the channel. So thanks for writing in and thanks for watching. And welcome to Ham Radio. This next question is going to get a lot of people really riled up. And uh, actually, I think this is a great question, and I would love to hear what your comments are. So do leave a comment. I suspect that every single person watching this will have their own opinion. But this is a really good one. So uh, this viewer asks, uh, Hi, Mike. I know that an antenna can be a personal thing, but what is the best first antenna that a new ham should consider for HF? just something I was thinking about would be a good question. Uh, th this is how you start a fight. Ask these questions. <laughs> so the best uh, best antenna for a new ham operator. So uh, I was a new ham operator at one point in time and I asked myself this question and I'm sure a lot of you have asked this question. So for me, and, and I can only speak for my personal experiences, but when I was just getting on the air, and, and I still have these same feelings to this day, but um, I, I would want something that's resonant. I would want something that's multi-banded. So for me, the first antenna that I uh, used for HF was something that I made. I, I made a 40 slash 20 meter fan dipole. I used an MFJ one-to-one -one ballon as the feed point. And uh, I used that antenna for the first couple years that I was a hams. And, and because it was a fan dipole with two elements on it, I was actually resonant on 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters. And it was ah, 67 feet long, something like that. And I had just enough room in my yard where, uh, where I could fit that. And I worked all over the world with that antenna. And with my external tuner, I was able to tune it up on bands that it wasn't resonant on. I mean, I've, I even tuned it up for 160 meters and worked a 160 meter AM contest. I got like two contacts, but it still worked. So um, for me as a new ham, I think building an antenna is probably one of the greatest things you can do. Now, I had a friend that, that uh, I became friends with very early uh, on the air. He was just one of the guys on the local repeaters, Jason W8ZZU. He had an antenna analyzer that he let me borrow. So that really opened up the doors for antennas to me, and I was able to, to just play around with it. So, uh, But I would say like a, some kind of dipole 
I mean, it's, I have another answer too, but some kind of resonant dipole um, would be the best. And especially if you make it, because then you learn about antennas and tuning and, and how they work. And you see on the analyzer, you know, what changes do and how high and, and the angles. You know, if you're horizontal, that's going to be uh, have a little bit different SWR than maybe if it's kind of an inverted V. It, it does change it a little bit. So you learn a lot about it. That's if you have room for a wire antenna. Another, uh, probably the other best antenna would be like a vertical fan dipole, something like the DX Commander specifically, because again, it's you're, you're learning about HF, you're learning about antennas. It's something that's resonant. You don't need to bother with an antenna tuner. I'm, I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of non-resonant antennas personally. Um, but everyone's situation is going to dictate what kind of antenna you can use. So here in my, here at my house, I have almost zero yard. So putting up a ver putting up a vertical like a DX Commander as much as I want to put up a DX Commander at my house, I just don't have the luxury. I don't have the room uh, for the counterpoise wires. Not an option. Uh, so I have to use uh, long wires, and I pretty much am relegated to NFED half waves. Uh, I could put a dipole up, but I don't have anywhere to support it from the middle. So my dipole would kind of be hanging like this, you know, from one end to the other without any support in the middle. So it would kind of sag as a, a V, not an inverted V, but like a proper V. So I opt for an NFED half wave. Um, yes, there is some transformation going from, you know, 25 to 2,500 to 3,000 ohms down to 50 ohms. And I'm sure there's some power loss in that transformer, but that's the, the sacrifice that I have to take for my situation. So, um, yeah, gosh, I could talk all day on this subject, but really think, think about how much room you have. Do you have room for a wire antenna? Uh, or do you, maybe if you don't, do you have room for a vertical and a bunch of radials going out? Either way, I would suggest something that's resonant uh, just because you're going to get kind of the as much power out as you can without having to transform any impedance in there. So how's that for an answer? Is that it's probably been about five minutes that I've been flapping my gums. So, <laughs> but everyone put your comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think would be the best antenna for a new ham. Great question. Thanks for writing in. I love that one. Next, we got another question about mass for portable operation. This viewer writes, hi, Mike. I have a Soda Beams Tactical Mini, a six meter, 19.6 foot uh, that I get that I got for lighter weight when I was doing a lot of soda. Now that I'm doing more POTA, I see you using much taller masts. Do you think a taller mast makes a big difference when using an NFED half wave like the 10 Tenna or KM4 ACK? If so, which ones do you use most often? I always try and get my antennas as high as I can. Uh, height is might, and the higher your antenna, the more fars you're going to get. <laughs> Thanks to not a Rubicon for the word fars. Um, so it really depends. You know, when I'm when I'm hiking through the woods, I'll usually bring the Soda Beams Carbon 6, which is only, uh, gosh, I mean, 6 meters, 19.6 feet. So your your takeoff angle is really what's going to change. You know, when you're when you're lower, and especially on 40 meters, you get more of that Envis kind of configuration. By having your antenna higher, you're going to get a better takeoff angle. And for me, I mean, I, I love the distant communication. So I, I always want to get out as far as I can. For me, that's what, what really gets it. So I typically will use either my Pactenna fiberglass 10 meter mast or the uh, DX Commander. 10 meter mast. I mean, they're pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, the Pactenna mast is a bit of unobtainium, where the DX Commander mast is quite attainable. And if we hop over on the internet machine, we can see here's the DX Commander uh, Soda Expedition Travel Pole for 68 pounds 50, whatever that is in English units. I, I think I think our dollars are pretty similar now. So say 70 bucks uh, in freedom units. Uh, another mast that I really, really like, although I don't own, is from Spider Beam. Now you can see they have anything from a 26 meter fiberglass pole for 598 bucks. But as you start getting down to the more reasonable sizes, like here's a 12 meter for 114 bucks. Here's a 10 meter for 78 bucks. So the 10 meter is the same size 
as the DX Commander and the Pack Tennis. So that's roughly 30, what is it, 33 feet, something like that. Uh, oh, it says right there, 33 feet, duh. So the Spider Beams are incredible quality, probably the best quality of all of these. Um, I got a chance to meet some of the guys from Spider Beams at Hamvention. Didn't get a chance to uh, interview them, but uh, they have no problem with availability. Neither does DX Commander. DX Commander has a lot in, in stock, um, but they're just... The sp anybody that owns a Spider Beam, put put your comments down below and and tell us what your, your thoughts are in, in terms of quality. I doubt you're going to see a single person that has anything bad to say about a Spider Beam's mask, so... Uh, check them out. But the 10 meter specifically is what I use. Honestly, if I had a 12 meter, I'd probably use that because I, again, I just, I want to get my antenna up as high as possible. So those are some recommendations for you, but, uh, yes, height is might, the higher you can get, uh, the better it's going to be. That's, I mean, for me, that's kind of like ham radio 101, but, uh, great question. Thanks for writing in. I love, love, love my telescopic mass. <laughs> Lastly, we have a question regarding counterpoise wires, and this viewer is asking, uh, Hi, Mike. Greg here. Had the pleasure of meeting you at Hamcation. Greg, the pleasure was all mine, buddy. I'll pretend I remember who you were. <laughs> was wondering, since the DX10 wire is not available, that's unfortunate, uh, what would be a suitable replacement that I could use for radials? Thanks, and keep up the great videos. Well, I don't know if they're great, but they're definitely videos. So I am a huge, and, and I've talked about this company before, I'm a huge, humongous fan of uh, the Poly Stealth Wire, specifically from uh, Amateur Radio Supplies. So here's AmateurRadioSupplies.com. If we scroll down to Antenna Components, this Antenna Wire thing is going to click uh, pop up. Let's click on that. Then we're going to see Stealth Antenna Wire, Poly Stealth, okay? So depending on kind of what you're trying to do, so let's so since we're comparing it to DX10, uh, this number 18 poly stealth wire, and you'll probably need more than 50 feet, but I would search for the 18 gauge poly stealth wire. Here's 150 feet. Um, you'd probably want about 300 feet if we're comparing it to the DX10, uh, or here's 500 feet for 119 bucks. That maybe they don't have it in 300 feet, uh, so you can get a 200 foot or whatever. But uh, the poly stealth wire is just it, it's incredibly strong it's silky smooth uh it's what i put on uh, when i had my 10 antennas antenna above my roof i used the 18 gauge poly stealth wire uh, i've used it for a couple antennas actually um i prefer the poly stealth wire on uh just about any uh, portable end fed half wave antenna that i make uh, I even put some on my uh, uh, Pactenna antennas. Uh, I just love the Poly Stealth. Now I was using 26 gauge, but Poly Stealth in general uh, would be the way I would go. Even even if you want like radial wires for your Wolf River Coil, DX Commander, uh, ham sticks, anything, the Poly Stealth is the way to go. Now, yes, you could go to Home Depot and get any kind of wire in the world, but when you start playing with different kinds of wires, you, you kind of feel their different characteristics. And the Poly Stealth, just, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't want to kink. It doesn't have a memory. It's just, it's a very nice wire to use. So that is my thoughts on what you should use for counterpoise. And now, obviously, when the DX10 comes back in stock, buy that. Because the DX10 wire is, ew, it is buttery silky smooth love 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 that dx10 so uh yes dx10 or poly stealth wire you can't go wrong with either one and that is going to bring this mailbag monday number 18 to a close thank you everyone for writing in you have such wonderful questions always 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 you never cease to uh impress me with your knowledge of your abilities to ask questions <laughs> And if you would like your question answered on Mailbag Monday, write me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com in the subject, put Mailbag Monday, and I will answer your question on an episode of Mailbag Monday. So, <laughs> guys, thanks so much. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and we will see you again on another episode of K8MRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.